Almost 60% of Georgian population is employed in agriculture, and most of it is comprised of unskilled labor force without any proper training and with the corresponding low level of output. Now, the question going forward is, can Georgia transform itself from agrarian economy to a knowledge-based economy, and that way find its niche in the global market? That's the big question. But let's first start by explaining what we mean by knowledge economy. Well, if other sectors of the economy are composed of agriculture, or so-called primary sector, manufacturing, the secondary sector, and services industry, the tertiary sector, the knowledge economy bases itself in education and human capital. In other words, we are talking about big investments in education, creation of knowledge and research institutions that makes it possible for the country to raise the standard of living in the long term. There are dozens of countries which have done so in the recent past, starting from Israel, which moved from production of oranges and kiwis to high-tech products such as Google's AutoSuggest, Korea, which now produces world-known brands like Samsung and Hyundai, Costa Rica, which is home to production base of Intel's semiconductor industry and many other examples of such kind. Now, what is needed to achieve such transformation? Step number one is to have a large-scale investments in education system of the country. In this regard, Georgia has obvious deficits as teachers and professors belong to the worst paid group category in the labor force. Step number two is to have investments in research institutions. The country has to start funding these institutions and they should be tied to universities, a place where the knowledge is created. Step number three. Private sector should closely cooperate with universities as it incentivizes the professors to work in the areas that have economic potential making it more likely that discoveries can be transformed into marketable products and lead to economic growth. On the question whether such transformation would take long, the history tells us that the range could start from 20 years and go up to 30 years. But at the same time, many development economists believe that it's possible to skip certain development stages or employing so-called leapfrogging theory. For instance, some countries in the past have moved from a situation without telephones to having mobile networks, leaving out the stage of landline telephones. In the end, in a today's hyper-connected world, it is highly likely that some leapfrogging will take place in the Caucasus. But don't forget the key to all this. Investments in education, and again education, is what is needed to make this happen.